Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are talking about collimating your Dobsonian telescope. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys and gals, so today we are working on a 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. Uh, pretty much any of the import Dobbs, you know, no matter what size, uh, should collimate pretty much the same way. By the way, if you're not familiar with what collimation is, it is just simply aligning the optics, the mirrors in this case on your scope to give you the optimal image. So obviously the you know, first step is you'll want to take off, you know, your dust caps on the scope. So let's get those guys out of the way. Okay, so the things that we're working with guys is, uh, you know, basically two items. We are working with uh, what's called a secondary mirror. That's this little mirror here. Uh, and these three screws basically adjust the orientation of that. And then we're going to be working with the mirror down there, the primary mirror, uh, which is adjusted by screws, you know, down there, which, you know, we'll kind of get to. Okay, so the easiest and, you know, by far the easiest method to collimate your daub is with the laser collimator. One of these guys here. Now guys, um, I will point out, you know, before we get to the collimation of, you know, like the actual scope, um, uh, especially like these entry level collimators, right? Uh, all they are is just like a cheap little laser pen. That's a few bucks, you know, usually. Uh, in this case, you know, this is the laser uh, made deluxe by Orion. That's uh, actually a really nice body. Uh, but uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that you want to make sure that this pen is actually collimated correctly in the tube before you start collimating your scopes. And uh, let's see here, I lost a little spring. So how do you do that? Because, uh, because if this device is not set up correctly from the factory, which you know very well may not be, well then your scope's not gonna be collimated either. So let's see how you, you could actually check, you know, very easily if your laser collimator is actually collimated. Okay, so you'll put the uh, laser into your focuser, right? And then you kind of put pressure on, uh, on that, you know, kind of going that way. And then you rotate it. And then you see how I'm rotating this, uh, the laser, right? And then the dot down there on the primary mirror, it's staying in the same exact spot, which is exactly what you want. So that means that this laser is collimated. Now, if it wasn't collimated, what would happen is um, it would actually basically kind of like trace out like a little circle, you know, kind of like, you know, like it would look like, you know, the, the dot is moving in a little circle like that as you're rotating it, okay? And now, the way that I'm doing it is I'm just kind of wiggling it around. But anyway, make sure that your laser is collimated. If it's not collimated, you know, if you just bought it, you know, send it back, you know, uh, exchange it basically. Okay, so kind of get into the actual collimation procedure. How do you do that? The very first step you want to do is, you know, you want to kind of sit this guy in, um, actually with this window pointing down, because uh, that way, uh, you know, when we do the primary mirror, uh, it's already in the correct orientation. And then, um, you know, like I'm pushing down on it with my fingers here. And then I'm going to set the set screw <clears throat> to where, you know, it's locked in. Hopefully in the orientation that your eyepiece is going to be in there. Okay, so we see the laser down there. Let's go get the tools. You know, depending on what scope you're working on, guys, this, the tools might be a little bit different. But in this case, it's Phillips screws, which is actually pretty common. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is adjust these screws to where that dot goes inside that little donut that's in the middle of the primary mirror there. Uh, which screw do you adjust? Uh, typically, you know, where, wherever the offset is, is that's, you know, the screw that you probably need to adjust. So right now, it's probably the screw that we're adjusting because it's where the offset is. Okay, so I am going clockwise to get the laser right into the donut. Okay, we're pretty close. So right now it's on the top portion, so kind of like on this side of the donut, on the top there. So I probably need to adjust the screw a little bit. Um, so counterclockwise, and then probably this screw as well, counterclockwise a little bit. And if you're not sure which way to turn the screws, I never am. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, trial and error, it's fine. By the way, small, as you guys, you know, hopefully can see on camera, it's very small turns. I'm not doing like huge, you know, turns. Uh, 
Okay, guys, check that out. That's pretty much, you know, I'd say dead center. Um, so, um, yeah, once you get it that close, we can move on to the primary mirror, which is right over here. So what we're going to do, guys, is um, we're going to be adjusting... Uh, on most of these scopes, there's going to be a total of six screws. Uh, three of them hold the uh, the mirror kind of locked down, and three of them are the adjustment screws. So I think on this stub, uh, these ones that do not have the springs are the ones that hold the mirror down, and the ones with the springs are actually the collimation screws. So let's undo the holding screws, so we'll just kind of loosen them up. Oh, this one's already pretty loose. And this one's pretty loose. Well, that's not good. Uh, so we'll definitely make them tighter. Okay, so guys, so at this point, what we're trying to accomplish, right, is having that laser uh, that in the peephole there uh, basically end up, you know, into the center, like essentially at the source, you know, come back to the source. So I'm going to start adjusting these collimation screws. And, you know, honestly, guys, I don't really know which ones I'm supposed to be adjusting. I'm just kind of guessing. Okay, so that's kind of moving in that direction. So now I'm going to do this one. See which way that takes me. Okay. Eh, no. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, so I did all the wrong screws in all the wrong directions, but now I'm going the right way. Okay, so getting closer to the source. And guys, check that out the laser just totally disappeared basically. Uh, so essentially right now we are in a pretty good state of collimation. I'd say for most of your like deep sky viewing and stuff like that guys, this is all you really need to do. If you're doing like planetary, realistically, uh, you'd actually want to do like, you know, follow this up with like a star test collimation uh, under the night nice sky basically. So yeah, so and at this point guys, you do want to uh, tighten these screws down, but these these can also adjust like the holding screws, they can adjust your collimation. Matter of fact, as you can see, the laser kind of came out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust these or uh, tighten these kind of all about the same amount. And okay, so now the laser's kind of back to the source. And uh, yeah, anyway, so just kind of snug these up to where your collimation is still stays true. And at this point, we are done. Alrighty guys, so we are at the end of the video. As you saw, the collimation wasn't too bad at all. Um, if you guys have any questions on the procedure or anything like that, you know, feel free to leave a comment in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing because of course that helps the YouTube algorithm will recognize that these videos are pretty decent and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.